Hey there guys, we've got news for Global on July 4th and this week the only thing we're getting is a vision card banner and the series boss battles that we knew about from the live stream. But let's go over it. So there's no new unit or new event this week, it's just this uh, United Forces Step Up banner for this vision card. And let's look at that vision card before we move any further. So I will say it's overall a pretty good vision card. It's, um, you know, 170 attack and magic. Uh, baseline, it gives 750 attack and magic, which is, I guess, now the second best after Athenese. Um, it gives, you know, 80% attack and magic percent. Uh, some resistances, some killers to beast, human, and dragon. And then it has this active ability once per battle. <coughs> reduces magic damage taken and activate barrier for caster. I really wish they gave more information. Is that like a 99% a mitigation for one turn? Is that like, you know, an 80% mitigation for five turns? Is it permanent 40%? What is it? What is it? I have no idea. So we'll find that out on Thursday evening or Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, and we can see. So there's the vision card. It's a very good vision card. It's not locked to any kind of series <coughs> or categories. It's just, there it is. Every unit in the game can get full benefit out of this card. So it's a good card. And as far as the step up banner itself, it looks like a bunch of guaranteed Neos. Um, that's either. So two, four, seven, 10, 12 guaranteed Neos for something like, I don't know, 20K, approximately 25K. Uh, and the raid up banners are, that's where it falls off the cliff. The raid up units are terrible. You don't want Orlando, you don't want Noctis anymore, you don't want Ramza anymore. And Dark Fina, Esper of Destruction, you probably don't want her, but I guess she's okay. Kind of. Not really. But there you go. You're also going to get an armory ticket, which you can, you know, exchange down here, and you'll get the Vision card. So... Yeah, is this worth you know twenty to twenty five k? I didn't I didn't math it up. It's probably around twenty five k. Is it worth it? In my opinion, probably not. If they had like unit fragments or something, or if the rate up units weren't garbage, maybe. But twenty five k just for a vision card, like I don't recommend it. I would put that that lapis towards like the anniversary banners that are still up you know those are some really good units um, I would even go towards that uh, that 30k step up that gave you fragments like I would value those more than this card I mean it's a really good card don't get me wrong it's a really good card and this is kind of an unknown of course if this ends up being um, you know crazy maybe it's like 90 maybe it's 99 percent mitigation for 10 turns I mean it's not gonna be but what if it is so yeah so this could easily change my opinion, but I can't really give an opinion until I have all the information. So there you go. Let's move along. Uh, we're also getting some of these special summons. Um, I didn't read it super closely, but uh, this is going to be eight, 8 per week times 3. So I guess you're getting 24 of these per week, <laughs> if I'm reading it correctly. And they're always going to be Brave Exvius seasonal units. So I bet you can't wait to get yourselves a Tiana or a um, Kryla or a Christine or a Quinn or, you know, Zaibu or all those other seasonal units that have absolutely no value whatsoever. But you can get them. And it's free. So I mean, it's free. So who cares? Whatever. Uh, you're also going to be getting eight of these per week as well. And this is two guaranteed Neos. So 16 guaranteed Neos per week. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, depending on what's available, uh, it could be cool. If, there, if there's a cutoff, is there a cutoff? It doesn't tell me where the cutoff is. So I'm assuming it's all all permanent units, in which case, yay. Hopefully you get yourselves, you know, a fundamental force or an ethne or a zon, or in my case, hopefully I get the new Yuna. But there it is. There it is. And then uh, there was also this, just a, a login reward. And I'm, I'm bringing this up because you'll notice that we did not get any kind of news about the monthly Crest Pass or Adventure Crest or anything like a Clash of Wills notice or a Dark Visions notice. 
None of that. Uh, there could still be a vision world. Vision worlds um, usually don't go into the monthly bulletin, but not even having crest passes is pretty disappointing. Is what they're telling us that there's going to be no content whatsoever for the month of July? Because not a single week is getting crest, adventure crest. None. No weeks at all. According to this, you know, maybe they'll change their mind. Anyway, so with that slightly negative out of the way, let's go to the interesting news that I am very excited about. The series of boss battles. We're going to get four of them. Chaotic Darkness with this materia. Now, all the materias are the same except for the killers. So all of them have 100% attack and mag, 50 LB damage, and 50 of the killer. Or, if you're a matching category for this one, it's Brave Exvius. You get 150 attack and mag, 100 LB, and then 100 human killer. Vlad's is 100 to demon killer. Kepka's is 100 to reapers. And his is also for Final Fantasy VI. And then X-Death is for Final Fantasy V, as well as Clash of Wills. And his is 50 to beast, human, and plant. So, those are pretty cool materials, honestly. Um, I'm not that worried about the rewards. I mean, they're very good. They're very good. I will absolutely use them. But the reason I'm excited is not for the rewards. I'm excited for the fights. So, what are all of you, all of your predictions for how hard these are going to be? Are they going to be very challenging? Are they going to be turn one OTK'd by fundamental force? Let me hear your predictions in the comments. <laughs> So, I'm going to real briefly go over all four of the series boss battles because if they are really hard, which I'm hoping for, you know, for something fun to do, but if they are really challenging, it's possible I might not have videos out until very late in the day if I'm busy working on them. I don't know. So, I'll give you some brief tips, of course, if they end up being easy and we turn one kill it with, like, a fundamental force, then, you know... I'll post that and go back and play more Final Fantasy X. <laughs> anyway, let's look at the fights. So, Vlad. Uh, he is a demon. And real quick, we're going to go through all of them. So, Vlad is a demon. Chaotic Darkness is a demon human. Kefka and all his statues are all humans. And X-Death is both beast and human plant. So, for those of you that are going to be setting your friends, your friends for people to use these on the trials, I will recommend that you give your unit status immunity, death immunity, and killers to human, demon, beast, and plant in that priority. Plant is the least important. It's only phase one of X-Death. Um, all of them are human. All four of them are actually, actually Vlad is pure demon. So demon and human are the important ones. Um, there you go. And then X-Death is beast as well. So toss that in there if you can, if you can fit it for your friend units. Um, what are some good friend units for you to set? Uh, Fundamental Force is probably going to be the most powerful, so that's a great one. Um, Ethne is good as well. I personally am not going to look for an Ethne friend just because her regular LB is not chaining. So it's a little awkward to use. I'd rather use, I'd rather, I'd rather use a chaining LB. Other really good units would be um, Celeste would be a good unit if you've got a decent EX level. Um, even Hayo would be fine for these kind of trials. Uh, and if you have any extra materia slots available, give them bulk. Bulk them up. Um, you know, swap out a little bit of EP for some like HP, Spirit, and Defense if you can afford it. Anyway, uh, so what does Vlad do? Vlad has a decent amount of non-elemental damage. So you're going to want a good tank. I would recommend a magic tank with some evasion on the party with a provoker. Um, now, the old Vlad didn't have accuracy. I do not know if they're going to add accuracy to the boss because he kind of needs it in this day and age. But um, if he doesn't have accuracy added to him, uh, then an evasion provoker is all you really need for that. But you definitely want a good magic tank. Um, good damage. Someone to dispel etc. And then when Vlad goes into his barrier, you need to hit him with, uh, is it even listed on the wiki? The wiki page was never completed, it looks like. 
Okay. Um, yeah, so when the when Vlad goes into his barrier, uh, universal repulsion barrier, and then he starts getting the barrier is formed, uh, basically damage immunity, you need to hit him with both ice and fire damage every single turn, and after three turns, the barrier will break, and you get one turn to damage him, and then the barrier goes back up. So that's that's how Vlad works. Chaotic Darkness, you're going to want dark and water resist on actually the entire party. So if you can fit that on your DPS units, it'll be helpful. Honestly, just tossing like a unit on Diablos will cover the dark resist. And the water is not that big a deal. We can just bring someone to buff water resist. But um, status immunity, uh, stop on a provoker, death immunity, uh, you know, etc. And the boss does status effects. And this boss has multiple thresholds as well. Um, 80, 50, and 20. And the boss will do things like dark damage, stop, gravity, and then prepare. He's, he's actually kind of got, got, got kind of a complicated AI. As you can see, the, the wiki page is pretty long. But hey, look at that. I've got a video on the wiki. I'm featured on the wiki from years and years and years ago. And if they keep the AI the same as it is, then this one shouldn't be... It'll, this will probably be the easiest of the four. So that one shouldn't be too bad, but you got to keep in mind that if you don't do the fight properly, then uh, he can be hard. Then we get then we get into the two more interesting ones. So Kefka, Kefka, I actually posted a video of this from the JP server not too long ago when they when they updated theirs, but uh, globals might be different. So the first three fights, I'm not going to go over too much. They're relatively simple. Just you know, maintain your buffs. They do dispel sometimes, so uh, keep that in mind. Your magic tank wants lots of resistances. Uh, they're overall not super bad. They do use stop, so keep that in mind as well. And then uh, the final boss is where it gets a little bit crazy. So there's basically two ways the Kefka fight can go, and it really depends on how they tune the fight. So if you've seen the videos from JP or the old videos from Global, you know that the primary strategy with Kefka is to burst him down very quickly and basically stun lock him. Or, in other words, leapfrog from threshold to threshold, where he basically wastes his turn. Because on his thresholds, he kind of just like does these meaningless turns that don't really matter, and they're, they're mostly irrelevant. <clears throat> yeah, so like, you know, the 30 threshold, he'll cast a buff on himself, and then he'll end turn. But next turn, he'll do something. Like the 50 threshold... He'll use um, a buff on himself. He'll use one magic attack that like your tank can just cover it. And he'll dispel, but then it'll end his turn. So he doesn't really attack during his thresholds, other than like you know debuffing you and stuff. But that's that's the primary goal that people use on Kefka, is to use excessively high damage and leapfrog him through his thresholds. That way he never really gets a chance to attack. Now one exception is hyperdrive. Because he counters hyperdrive every turn, it is a non-elemental fixed attack that uh, bypasses cover and gives you a damage over time. So that can be very painful if your units are not uh, are not bulky. Now here comes the catch, though: if they tune him strong enough to where you are not able to leapfrog through thresholds, and for example, you bring in like your big boy damage dealers, you set them up, and you burst, and you do like. 17% damage and the boss is still in his normal phase then Kefka is going to be insanely hard to fight because once he finishes his once he once he finishes his scripted threshold stuff and starts doing his normal turns they're insane he spams dancing mad he spams light of judgment hyperdrive all kind of craziness like hyperdrive is painful but Light of Judgment, notice it bypasses cover. It's fixed that it's fixed magic damage. It's really painful. Dancing Mad is fixed physical damage. These bypass cover. You cannot evade fixed damage. You cannot mirage fixed damage. It is going to hit your party in the face. And it deals stupidly high damage. And yes, like most people on JP are unable to kill Kefka if they don't have enough damage to just burst him through the thresholds. Because once his normal turns get going, it hurts. It hurts a lot. A lot. So there you go. And 
after that warning, I still hope that Global tuned him to be hard enough that you have to deal with it. It's not impossible to deal with. You just have to have really bulky units and really strong mitigation. I mean, we've got Abigail on Global. You could bring Runda if you really wanted to. I mean, maybe Wilhelm will be like a 90% physical mitigation full uptime. Maybe Wilhelm is the answer to the Kefka. I don't know. Of course, there's also the possibility that his stats are really low and we just blow him up or he deals low damage. So, again, it all comes down to the tuning. We'll have to see how it goes. And then the one I am most excited about is x -Death. This was the first series boss battles and one of the hard, maybe not the hardest, but definitely up there with Kefka. So x -Death, just like his name says, loves to use death, and including unprovocable, unresistible death that removes your re-raise beforehand. So if x -Death says a unit is going to die, they are going to die. They will not re-raise, they will not pass go, they are just going to be dead. It's awesome. I love it. Now, yet again, the typical solution to this is speed. Speed. If you kill him quickly before he can use these death attacks, like I think they're called White Hole. Um, no, not White Hole. Uh, that's the reason. No, Neo Black Hole. Yeah, Neo Black Hole. It dispels you first, so you can't re-raise, and then it inflicts unresistible death. Just dead. <laughs> and it can't be provoked. And it can't be immune. So, yeah. So he only does that, I think, starting on turn three. Yes, turn three. But they're slot targeted. So keep that in mind. So these, you know, look at the wiki. It'll tell you. The white holes are not important. Just wear death immunity and you're fine. Um, the neo black holes cannot be provoked or resisted. Uh, they go to slot four. So the turn three, slot four is going to die on turn three. Um... Of course, you can, always, you can always revive them the next turn, but yeah. Uh, turn 6, yet again. And then turn 9, yet again, on two people, including a random slot. And then on turn 10, you lose. Like, you just lose. Turn 10, it's AOE. The whole party is dead, and it does it every single turn. So, so even if you, like, you know, hide for that turn, it happens every turn the rest of the fight. Yeah, so there is, like, a hard limit of 10 turns to kill X-Death in Phase 1. So, again... I mean, I might get some pushback from players for me saying this, but I really do hope it's tuned very hard. Of course, that would mean that people that don't have the newest units might not be able to win. It's kind of like a double-edged sword. You can't please everybody. You really can't. Because either you tune the fight to where it's only beatable by people with the best of the best units, and they're going to have a really hard challenge. And it'll feel like a real accomplishment to beat this boss. On the other hand, if you make it like, you know, a normal event boss that's doable by a very large audience. The problem is people that do have the good units are going to steamroll it and it'll be no fun. They'll like kill it on turn one. What's the point? So I don't know. My selfish, you know, thinking about myself opinion is I want it to be really hard because I want a fun challenge. At the same time, I do realize that would cause a large amount of players to be unable to beat it, which is not what I want. But at the same time, I want a challenge too. So maybe, maybe, the, maybe we can have like the best of both worlds and they'll add two versions of the fight. They probably won't, but who knows? We'll see. Anyway, that's only phase one. Then we go to phase two of X-Death. When he gets um, his damage mode, basically. So he starts using things like Vacuum Wave and Rampaging Void. Again, fixed attacks that ignore Provoke and ignore Cover. So lots and lots of damage and they're random targets. So it's really painful. He does AoE magic damage as well. He buffs up. He dispels you. Um, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, he does have thresholds as well. Including the 30 threshold and then the 20 threshold. Uh, where he just spams these rampaging voids all over the place. you got to kill him really quickly. And once again, I've got a really old video featured on the wiki that if you really want to see uh, back in the old days. What did I use? Lotus Mage, Fina, Kryla, Charlotte, Myra, and double Aloha Lastwell Chainers. Oh my god, we're going old school. Look at me. Um, anyway. Yeah. 
So I will have videos of these on Thursday, and we'll have to see how fun they are or how easy they are. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, what, you know, how do you feel about these kind of fights? Do you want to see them tuned crazy, crazy hard, even if it means most players wouldn't be able to beat it? Or do you want them to be like another event boss where you kill it on turn one? You know, let us know in the comments. That's the event for the week. So I will see you guys on Thursday for these fights. They should be fun. I hope. We'll see. See you then.